um, you know, people won't necessarily know that that that's that's your past experience. There's been that that involvement in EM, and may have even trained me back in the day. I think I might have, Michigan. I think I might have. So I'm here today with uh, Deputy Commissioner Mel Pexton. And uh, you're eight months into your role now, and uh, you know, come July, uh, it'll be 12 months that you've, you've been uh, in the role of Deputy Commissioner. But in amongst that eight months has, has been our first female Deputy Commissioner, and, and what's that What's that meant to you? Yeah, I had underestimated, I think, what it meant to other people. Commissioner is what I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when I was appointed that uh, you were very kind in sort of saying, you know, you don't have to be the poster girl for, uh, for women and women's issues, if you like. Um, but what I have found is that it is quite a significant step for the organisation and that it has been so well received that staff have approached me on a number of fronts around that. And I have to say, it's actually been a really lovely aspect of the job to be able to connect with our female volunteers and workforce. Um, and have opportunities to have those discussions that I probably underestimated when I first took the role. Yeah, so so people sort of talk about diversity and, and everyone's mind immediately goes to the to the male-female piece, but it's a bit more than that. It's a lot more than that. And I think that's one of the things that certainly throughout my career I've really, um, really learned and recognised is that when you do it, talking about the complex nature of our work, emergency management, emergency services, um, you want really diverse thinking, you know, and that will come in many shapes and forms, not just in gender, but in a whole raft of those other diversity sort of domains, if you like. Um, and that's really critical because we are a public safety organisation at the end of the day, and we need to be able to try and represent those communities that we serve so that our thinking is in line with the service we need to deliver. You know, many people uh, in the emergency management sector in Western Australia, uh, they're involved now or have come in in the last um, you know, 12 or 13 years, uh, wouldn't know, of course, that you've trained many people in emergency management at, with, your, with your previous role in emergency management, Western Australia or EMWA, um, in, the, in the early 2000s. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we want to reinitiate, really, because those capabilities and those skills for these complex events that we're seeing and um, really building the capacity of the sector and it's sort of really broadening out. I think we've experienced in our last recent sort of large scale events, Saroja, Wurraloo, that other agencies also are looking for those skills. So I think it's a really exciting time for EM and for DFES to really take that lead um, and really bring in those, once again, those diverse people into this sector. Yeah, and, and the diverse thoughts. If, so, you know, you people, um, you know, people won't necessarily know that that that's, that's your past experience, has been that, that involvement in EM. and may have even trained me back in the day. I think I might have, Michigan. I think I might have. So it's a bit of a journey from, from EMWA in the early 2000s to Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Fire and Emergency Services in 2023. So, um, so what's, your, what's your journey been like from that point through to, through to now? It's really important to have champions and mentors surrounding your career journey. Um, I think one zero for personal and professional growth, you know, you're going to find yourself in situations where you really do need to bounce ideas. You want to get a sense check on how you're going, or well, you might want to learn from other people's experiences. It's really important, I think, um, and it keeps you on a bit of a path. Um, and I've been really lucky. I am often and had been during that journey the only female in a room, I'll be honest. And so, you know, if you're looking for a female mentor, you may be looking for a little while. So, you know, you really do need to think about how those champions might be a male and how that can still work for you. And I've been really blessed, I would say, um, with a number of male champions and mentors in my life. And um, one of them has been yourself. So, um, you know, hearing from people's experiences is really important for your own growth. Um, and I think it's really important. But I also know that you have been involved in the Champions of Change program. So how do you see those roles um, and how do they benefit the sector? Yeah, well, look, it's a great question because um, certainly when I was appointed uh, into that into that national committee that, you know, you ask yourself, well, well what what am I trying to achieve here? It's, it's got to mean something to me. You know, the, the diversity of thought piece is, is something that, that, really, that really stuck with me about... Um, we're just getting people to understand that there are different views out there about 
about how we can do our business and how the community might interact with us. Uh, and, the, and the strength of the organisation is, is driven by those diverse thoughts. And uh, if you can open your mind to, to sitting around a table and listening to those different views, then um, you know, there is the opportunity for you with a broader mind to be able to um, yeah, improve the way that, that, that individuals in an organisation go about their business on a daily basis. And that, you know, if, if, if everybody's engaging in that approach, then, um, then there's a, there's a far greater chance that the organisation's going to be, you know, serving the needs of the diverse community uh, so much better.